still one of Britain's premier expresses, the Flying Scotsman completes the 188 and a half miles to York in one hour 50 minutes, an average speed of 103 miles an hour. The illuminated B means we're taking the number one fast line to Belle Isle. The station throat, much simplified over the years. Ahead, the centre bore of the 528 yard long gasworks tunnel. The east bore to the right is no longer in use. Oakley Park. It was here in 1973 that the first holes were dug to house the overhead power equipment for the Great Northern Suburban Electrification Scheme. The most notorious bottleneck on the East Coast main line, the double track section between Digswell and Woolmer Green. The section is now used to capacity in peak periods, but widening would require two new tunnels, the remodelling of well in North. Note how the approach control signal changes from red to yellow, and the position one junction indicator, or feather, illuminates. This is triggered by the train's occupancy of the track circuit. Incidentally, now forming the basis of modern signalling practice, the first track circuit is thought to have been installed in Gasworks Tunnel in 1894. Doncaster Works, or the plant to the left. Hamilton South Junction, diverge here for Leeds via Gascoigne Wood. The new bridge needed to lift the Selby to Leeds line over the diversion. A horizon to the east, York Minster looks over a station much simplified as part of re-signalling in 1989. Most of the lines around York resulted from the endeavours of the so-called railway king, George Hudson. A tough-nosed businessman, he made and lost a fortune out of the railway mania. The line joining from the east is a freight-only line from Stockton and Hartlepool. It makes a junction with the main line at Ferry Hill South. This, the newer King Edward Bridge, was opened by His Majesty King Edward VII on the 10th of July, 1906. The bridge consists of four large girder spans. The, the Great Hall of Berwick Castle had to be demolished to make room for Berwick Station not a likely proposition if it were to be mooted today. We've just passed into Scotland, for the border is not actually at the Royal Border Bridge at all, but three miles to the north. We're now passing through Grant's House, the site of one of a handful of small wayside stations en route. However, it was the only one to survive into the 60s. The last mile into Edinburgh is the steepest on the whole East Coast main line at 1 in 78. Waverley Station lies within a natural valley hollowed out by glacial action in the Ice Age. The station covers an area of 18 acres. 